Let us solve the equation 7 to the power sine square x plus 7 to the power cos square x equal to 8. So we want to solve this equation. Let's call this equation to be equation 1. You see that it will be much easier if we simply multiply this equation by 7 to the power sine square x. So multiplying equation 1 by 7 to the power sine square x we obtain. So we have equation 1 copied as it is. We simply multiply by 7 to the power sine square x, 7 to the power sine square x. So one term is multiplied by 7 to the power sine square x. So does other term. So every term of left hand side is multiplied by 7 to the power sine square x. And so I should multiply every term of the right hand side by 7 to the power sine square x. Now we got the base are same so we can add the power. So let us add the power sine square plus sine square. So we have two number of sine square x. So this equation can simply be written as 7 to the power 2 times sine square x. We have got two number of sine square x. Once again base are same so we can simply add the power 7 to the power sine square x plus cos square x equal to 8 into 7 to the power sine square x. Now by trigonometry we know that sine square x plus cos square x is exactly equal to 1. So let's write that equal to 1. So sine square x plus cos square x equal to 1. So we'll replace that by 1. So we'll obtain 7 to the power 1. We have replaced sine square x plus cos square x by 1. Rest of the expression we copy as it is. Well then, we have got a much simpler expression. Let's take everything to the left hand side. This implies 7 to the power sine square x whole thing square minus 8 into 7 to the power sine square x plus 7 equal to 0. Okay, we got everything to the left hand side. Oh plus 7, yes. Okay. Though we have simplified the given expression, but still it looks a bit complicated, right? So let's introduce a new variable y so that we'll get much simpler expression. Okay, so we can write this equation is y square minus 8y plus 7 equal to 0. What did we do? We just take 7 to the power sine square x equal to y. Now this is a quadratic equation. There are many methods of solving it. Let's solve this quadratic equation by splitting the middle term method. In this case that will be the easier. So we will split 8 as 7 plus 1. The middle term 8y will write 8 as 7 plus 1 and 7 is 7 into 1. Rest of the expression we copy as it is y square minus 8y. 8 can be written as 7 plus 1. So we have split it 8 into 7 plus 1 and 7 is 7 into 1 equal to 0 as it is. Now y square minus 7y minus y. Oh this is plus 7 plus 7 into 1 equal to 0. Now, in the splitting the middle term method, we'll simply take common whatever possible. We got y square minus 7y and this one. So, from this expression, we can take y common and we'll be left out with y minus 7. What about this one? Let's take minus 1 common and we'll be left out with y minus 7 equal to 0 as it is. Now, once again, we can take y minus 7 common. And when we do so, we will be left out with y minus 7. We take it common and we will be left out with y minus 1. Now we see that if product of two number equal to 0, then one of the number has to be 0. But we don't know which one. Maybe y minus 7 is 0. Maybe y minus 1 equal to 0. So we 
we have two choices either y minus 7 equal to 0 or y minus 1 equal to 0 we don't know exactly which one is 0 but in any case we we must have y equal to 7 or y equal to 1 but we are assuming y to be equal to 7 to the power sine square x we have assumed y to be equal to 7 to the power sine square x so let's write y equal to 7 to the power sine square x that imply uh, 7 to the power sine square x equal to 7 to the power 1 what about this one 7 to the power sine square x equal to 7 to the power 0 now you see that it follows that sine square x in this case must be equal to plus minus sorry sine square x must be equal to 1 and in this case sine square x must be equal to 0 if sine square x equal to 1 then we can say that x equal to uh, first let's write sine x equal to plus minus 1 in this case sine x equal to 0 if sin x equal to plus minus 1 then x must be odd multiple of pi by 2 yes it can be 90 degree or it can be 270 degree and so on what about sin x equal to 0 it follows that x equal to uh, 2 n pi or n pi or 2 n times pi by 2 from there it follows that it's an even multiple of pi by 2 and from here it follows that it's an odd multiple of pi by 2 so we can combine these two and say that therefore x must be equal to all multiple of pi by 2 where n is an integer it can be even or it can be odd doesn't matter in this case it turns out to be even multiple of pi by 2 it, turn, it turns out to be odd multiple of pi by 2 so we combine and say that x is all the multiple of pi by 2 n times pi by 2 where n is an integer